Welcome everyone to this lecture. My name is Aline Frank. I'm leading the research support team at the Science Library, and I'm a subject librarian for biology. BioRender is a powerful illustration tool because it now consists of thousands of pre-made icons and templates that are ready for you to be used. These cover more than 30 fields of the life sciences, and altogether, this makes it a very easy and a quick way on drawing a scientific image and illustration. The program also aims at standardizing visual scientific communication and in general to facilitate when you're working on a scientific illustration. It's an online tool, so you don't need any installations to be done. It's suitable for all computers. It works with different browsers. At the moment, Chrome is recommended. And at the University of Bern, we currently have access to the premium version, which is a very good thing for you. To get started, um, you have here the URL given that you can use to access BioRender at the University of Bern. You have first to create an account and then you'd be able to log in. You'd also find the tool on our websites at the portal Natural Sciences and the Medicine and Pharmacy portal. You just go to these pages and look for the tools sections and you would find BioRender listed right there. It may be that you already have a BioRender account from a single paid version or from the free version. So you can link it actually to the BioRender University Burn account. And yes, you do have to sign in through that very portal because only this will allow you to profit from the pro features. So I'll go now directly to uh, BioRender. So here we go, we're now in BioRender. I'm logged into my account. And what I get first is um, the structure. On the left side, we'll have a folder structure. So you have the My Files folder, folder that's given by the program. I have the content given here. And then I've got the possibility to create new folders for whatever purposes. Um, I can customize this right here. And in case that someone would share a figure with me, I would have those files right down here. On top, we can then switch from the gallery to the BioRender template section. And now we are in the place where we can search for and find illustrations that are in a stage that are almost ready to use. So these are pre-made templates. So you can search for by using the search bar. Let's search for um, cell culture, for example. And I would get um, a lot of different templates that suit um, this topic, so I could pick one and use it for my purpose. I could also browse through um, the categories on the left. That's the second option to find templates. And I could switch to the poster session, um, the poster section. That's also important and easy if you want to create a poster. Then we have the learning hub on top. That would bring me directly to the uh, tutorial homepage. You can see it here where I have all available tutorials listed. So going back to the gallery, I'd like to show you how you actually create a new figure, a new illustration. So I use the button create new and we'll have a new illustration. And now we have a new sheet that is popping up here. The blank thing in the middle is called canvas. So it's basically a slide or a blank sheet where you can build your figure. You have the possibility to add more slides, more canvases up here. So you can have different slides arranged. So in the end, you could even use it to present uh, your presentation. On the left is what I call the content bar or bars. It's more than one. We have here basically everything that you could use to add to your figure. Um, I'll go through in detail in a minute. And on, on top then, here we have all the different tools that you need, uh, lines to insert, shapes, text, and more. So let's get started with the icons. We have many, many different icons, different cell types that you can go through. We have proteins, nucleic acids, human anatomy things, 
lab objects, also important to show how your experiment was established, for example, species, chemistry stuff, and down here, even a biomochi section, if you need something uh, more fun to add to your poster. So you can browse through or search by the search bar. Also, we can access the templates here. That's the same as I've shown you before, just a little bit smaller. You search in a search bar or browse through the categories. Then we have different brushes. I'll come back to that in a minute. We have the favorite section where you can have your favorites. Uh, you can upload your own files, pre-made um, icons that you have from previous work. And you have a direct link to the protein data bank, also very useful. So in my case, for this presentation, I'd like to show you how I'll work with different kinds of icons. Let's say I would like to show how uh, my experiment with zebra fish uh, was working. So I'm looking for a zebra fish. Is there an icon for zebra fish? Yes, I got several icons. Uh, so let's get a male zebra fish first and maybe a female as well. So I just drag and drop them to my canvas. I place them where I want to have them. And now can, I can now work on it. I can have a different style uh, on the left. I can even have a color overlay. I can work on transparency, saturation, glow. So that's um, easy to adjust my item like this. So this is a very simple single icon. Now there are also icons with several layers. I have here a zebra fish heart. So maybe I'm working with heart of a zebra fish. And now I have the possibility, as you can see here, to access different layers. So still I can access the whole item and work on it as a whole item um, object, or I can go to one of these layers, let's say to the atrium and make it a different color. So this is very useful because you can go into details and adjust just parts of a single icon. I'll add now um, another slide. And now I can show you that there are also pre-made grouped icons. So my zebra fish, they're breeding in a tank. So let's see whether I can find this fish in a tank. Yes, here we go. Um, I got this tank icon. And now you see that in contrast to the single icon before, we have now a purple border around this icon, indicating that this is a grouped icon. And when I now double click on it, I can access its content and work on the single items that are contained within that grouped icon. You can ungroup your icon, right click, ungroup, and then you would have single objects to go with. And of course, if you have single objects, you can also group them and make a grouped icon out of it. So let's take my two fish. I mark them both, right click, and I group it. So I got a purple grouped icon. So these are the major um, icons that we have here. Now, one very, very cool thing about BioRender, especially when you're working with membranes or um, DNA, so anything that is, let's say, um, long, flexible, bendable, that is here represented as a brush. And you see in the brushes section that all these brush items, they got that small little blue brush indicating that's actually a brush. So let's take a lipid B layer. Uh, maybe this one here. And you see also um, all icons, they have a name. So you see what it actually is, what it should be. A phospholipid is, is it here? And now I can um, make it longer. I just take one of the nodes and pull it where I want to have it. So it gets longer and I can bend it. There are nodes. Take some time here. Going back to these nodes. And now I can bend it in the direction that I want to have it. So it's really flexible. 
and it will not break this membrane, but just adjust it to the movement that I make. Um, you can even cut it in pieces. So in case that you would like um, highlight that there is a leakage uh, somewhere in the membrane. So you just go to separate brushes into editable icons. You have to know that this is a one-way road. So first, uh, remember to uh, perhaps save this right click as a favorite. So you would be able to get back to it. Um, but now I can edit, I separate this into editable icons. I have to confirm this. And now I'm back to actually a grouped icon. You see it's purple again. And when I double click on it, I can now delete parts of it and continue to work um, on a leaky membrane, for example. And just to add for your interest, there are also circular brushes like this one here. Um, it's basically the same, except that when I want to cut it, I do not um, separate it in editable icons here. Um, you could do so, I think, but there's also a scissor icon when you scroll over it, you use the scissor and then you have it cut in pieces. So you have, I have two pieces right now, or I can, let's see, make it smaller like this. Um, it's a very useful thing. So that's everything I wanted to tell you about brushes. The uploads again, as I said, are useful for you when you have, let's say a QR code to be added to a poster or the PDB section, also important if you're working with proteins. Um, you can retrieve uh, PDB proteins right here. So you enter uh, the ID or you upload your own protein. So once I retrieve one, I just pick one from the ones um, given here. You will be guided to a interface that allows you to adjust this protein. I can rotate it and I can change its surface. Um, I can change the color style. And when I'm um, okay with how it looks like, I just save it as a new icon and then it would be ready in my bar to be added um, to the canvas. So that's it for the different icons. It may be that the icon that you're looking for is not present. Still there are thousands of, but still it may happen. And in this case, just use the help function and request a custom icon. This is something that we have included in our subscription plan. And I think it's a good thing to make use of it. You have to follow these rules that are given here, but once uh, these are okay with BioRender, you would be able to get your own customized icon. Finally, um, you would be interested in uh, sharing your figure. You may be working in a group, so you can share it up here. There's a button, you invite someone to work with you. And the good thing is that you can work on the same canvas at the same time. So it re really works um, simultaneously. And the very last step would be to export your figure. Let's say you want to have this one here. In this case, you use the export function. Uh, you have to make clear what slide you are working on. I think that's that was slide number two. Yes, I can adjust its dimension, the file type. Transparent background is often a good thing. And then um, I can even set the resolution to 600 dpi if that's needed. But usually 300 dpi will do it. And down here, you also have the possibility to get a publication permission. This is needed when you want to use this very illustration for your published work um, in a scientific journal. So you would then download this uh, license right here. I would export it right now, and then I would find it again in my downloads. So that is in a nutshell how BioRender will work. I know there are many, many more features. You may be interested in something else. Just uh, let me know later in the discussion and we'll come back to this. I'd like to close with a few more words. You may not be a life scientist, I know. Um, BioRender might still be useful for you, especially 
if you have your own icons ready. So you can upload them and you may just profit from the different functions um, of the illustration tool to make it a very nice graph. You may ask for a customized icon, just as I said before, may also be useful. And finally, you could also make use of the poster templates, which is really a good thing if you want to come up with a, a nice pretty poster within a short period of time. Some words about publication rights and citation. We are on an academic subscription here in Bern, so you have the right to publish the illustrations that you make with BioRender. So just use the um, publication license function when you export your figure. You do not need a license for posters or other similar purposes. And in both cases, just remember to cite BioRender and how to cite exactly, you would find that in the BioRender help function. There's also a help window where you can chat with a bot or a person that will help you when there are small questions. And finally, you may be more interested in more details, so you can go to the tutorial sections, for example, to get more knowledge on how to uh, use the circle crop function. This is very useful when you want to have um, something like a magnifying glass on your illustration to show something large that is actually small or a small part of something bigger. That is a very cool thing about BiRender. And also you get information on the poster design and many more things. So yeah, that's it about BiRender uh, for now. Have fun and let me know whether you have questions. Thank you very much.